I'm Dick Purinton of the Washington Island Ferry Line, and I'm a member of the Friends of Plum and Pilot Islands. The Fog Signal Building In days before radar or GPS or other electronic means of navigation, sailors relied on the compass, clock, and lead line to assure their position relative to land and shallows. A slight set in the actual course sailed could spell disaster, especially during heavy fog, rain, or snow, whenever visibility was poor. Foghorns also aided the navigator by providing further means of warning to those who sailed close quarters, such as when transiting Death's Door Passage. Plum Island's fog signal is believed to have been installed shortly after the range lights were made operational, which was in 1897. The Federal Light List of 1901 gave the fog signal characteristics. A three-second blast, followed by 17 seconds of silence, then another blast, and so on. The original foghorn was powered by steam, and the building housing machinery that produced steam was located on the western corner of Plum Island. From that position, with its horns trained, and you can still see the board that once held a variety of horns alongside the building, Toward the shipping that approached the passage from the west, blasts were projected across the water. Pilot Island, located at the eastern lakeside entrance to the passage, had its own extremely powerful fog signal that could be heard from miles away. Pilot Island's fog signal sounded different characteristics, so that there would be no confusion as to which horn was heard. Pilot Island sounded a five-second blast, followed by 30 seconds of silence. In June of 1962, Pilot Island was discontinued as a manned light station, and at that same time, its fog signal was discontinued. However, Plum Island's fog signal continued until 1975, using compressed air in those later years to deliver the sound. Plum Island's characteristics were changed to a two-second blast, followed by two seconds of silence, then a two-second blast, followed by 24 seconds of silence. By 1975, and shortly after I began working on the ferries, the pilot house of nearly all large commercial vessels employed radar navigation, a much more accurate means than a fog signal for establishing a ship's position relative to landforms or shallows. Even smaller vessels, such as fishing vessels and pleasure yachts, had gradually shifted toward electronic navigation, such as Loran Sea. The sounds produced by a foghorn for navigation, while still helpful, were comparatively inaccurate, and as a consequence, not as essential. During the same 1970s time period, U.S. citizens whose homes were near Coast Guard installations that sounded fog signals found them to be an irritation, and some of them brought political pressure to reduce or eliminate foghorns. It was this gradual shift toward obsolescence that resulted in Plum Island's fog signal being shut down in 1975. The Coast Guard engineman for the station said that their single-cylinder Nordberg generator used to power the air compressor needed repair work, and our ferry, C.G. Richter, happened to have a similar model engine as a vessel generator. I later learned from another Coast Guardsman that by his unofficial observation, once the fog signal was discontinued and lacking the oppressive penetrating blasts produced night and day, Plum Island's white-tailed deer were able to thrive and reproduce. There did, in fact, appear to be a direct relationship between the fog signal elimination, a rising deer population, and the resultant reduction in ground hemlock and seedling plants, all happening within a time span of 10 years or so after the Plum Island fog signal was discontinued. Mm -hmm.